Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Tuesday, August 11th, 2020. I am Andrew Hansen. Happy to be joined by Sugar Shane Caldwell, the fan duel tie for first Millie Maker of opening night of the NBA restart. He's back again. Shane, great to see you here again tonight. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, good to see you as well. And uh, looking looking forward to another awesome slate in the NBA. The bubble is getting very interesting. And, oh, it really uh, is. And we're happy that uh, we pretty much swept, uh, especially uh, FanDuel. We swept and had a great uh, great day uh, yesterday on uh, for uh, NBA DFS. Uh, we were really locked in, and it was a great day for members and our pros here. So very excited about that, and we're looking forward to this crazy slate is the best way to describe it. <laughs> yeah, it really is. But you're right. We went three for three. On FanDuel, we gave out three lineups to our members, a hybrid lineup to use in cash or GPP, and then two alternative GPP lineups. And all three of them cashed in all the GPPs. So it was tremendous. Um, you know, we were on Boban. Uh, we were on Darius Baisley. We had everybody pivot to Norman Powell. Um, and, you know, those, those were probably the three keys um, that really gave us the edge. And for the folks who missed yesterday's podcast, we had a nice long chat about Boban. And thankfully, Rick Carlisle, I think he may have tuned in because he got Boban out there to start and he kept him out there and he smashed value. We also had him as a core play on DraftKings for our members, along with J.J. Barea. Um, so really tremendous night on both on both sites. And we're just excited because before yesterday's podcast, you know, Coach and I made it a point to really talk about how this is this is where we can gain an edge. This is the final week of the bubble in the regular season. We know there's going to be a ton of moving parts. And we, we were all over it uh, for the Monday slate. And Shane and I have been digging in here middle of the night uh, to get ready for the Tuesday slate. I mean, there's so many moving parts here, Shane, that Vegas doesn't even have any lines up. Yeah, I was joking earlier. I said, it's, Vegas can't even figure this out right now, and they have a lot of smart people figuring these things out. So it's that's how you know that it's it's chaos. If you look at the injury report, you need about three or four pages just to print it out, you know, or normally you just have like maybe one page. So, yeah, so I have a lot more uh, pages of notes than normal here. Uh, and on DK, we have a seven-game slate ranging all the way from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. at night. And you got a ton of injuries and a ton of different stuff going on. And we're going to talk about some of the teams that are have something to play for. Uh, it's, and some of the teams have almost nothing to play for. You know, So that's really the big factor here is some teams just looking for evaluation period and just playing everyone you know, 20 minutes or so. And then some teams are, are going all in. And obviously you want to stack those teams in a good game environment and teams that actually want to win. So we'll talk about that because seeding right now in 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 the the uh, playoff spots have a lot to do with this. Yeah, they really do. So we're, we'll factor that into the analysis as well, just like we did yesterday. And we want to invite our listeners to come become members of the DFS Coach Talk family. Uh, you can do that at dfscoachtalk.com. You can pick up a weekly, monthly, or annual membership. And that gives you access to all of our lineups in all the sports. And you know, Coach is coming off uh, a huge weekend, a 20K weekend in, in Major League Baseball. We had members win a, a ton over the weekend there. Uh, as I said, we had a great day in, in NBA today. That's our primary sport. And so if you jump in as a member, what you get is the full FanDuel lineup every night. And that's permitted by the FanDuel community guidelines. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing that. Uh, you can't do it on DraftKings. So we have a coach's clipboard with a core play, core group of players that are highlighted and then some other players that you can use uh, that are sort of a part of the pool on the coach's clipboard. So jump in as a member and uh, we'd love to have you. It's been great here to celebrate these wins with our members and we'd love to have you join as well. So uh, DFSCoachTalk.com for that. And then uh, we want to thank our sponsors real quick here for bringing this podcast forward, mybookie.ag. We have a tremendous offer there. Uh, you can check that out on our website. It involves a match and it involves a free play if you use the promo code COACHTALK. And then TVG, that's where the world watches and wagers on horse racing, tvg.com. 
$300 risk-free bet. You can get that on our website. Just scroll down and click the link and you'll be off and running. Risk-free $300 bet. So please take advantage of that. Shane, uh, let's jump into this seven-game slate on DraftKings five-game main slate on FanDuel. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to focus on the pricing on DraftKings. If you want to get our takes uh, specifically for FanDuel, then just jump in as a member and we'll get you that lineup in Discord. That's our chat area. We give out the lineup 30 minutes before lineup lock. And then we're in there with you all the way until the tip-off in case we need to make any changes. So let's get started with the seven-game DraftKings slate. As I mentioned, we don't even have any lines up yet here at mybookie.ag. So we'll talk a little bit about the pace and offensive efficiency for some of these teams. And we do have a couple games circled for potential game stacks. Now, game number one, not one of those. It's Brooklyn and Orlando, one o'clock Eastern tip off. And, you know, we have a bunch of news here, but. You know, these teams don't really have anything to play for. Brooklyn's locked in as the seven seed. Orlando's locked in as the eight seed. So it'll be uh, an interesting set of players in this first game. Uh, I'll, I'll mention the injuries on both sides. Well, you can call them injuries or you can just call them scratches, I guess, right? Big yeah. smile from, from Shane right. on that one. So <laughs> on the Brooklyn side, we've got Karis Levert, uh, Jarrett Allen, Joe Harris, Garrett Temple, Jamal Crawford, they are all out. That is a big chunk of what's left of the Brooklyn rotation. So uh, that's that's the Brooklyn side. On the Orlando side, we've got Evan Fournier and Aaron Gordon. Uh, doubtful, along with MCW. And then Terrence Ross is out. So what do you make of game number one here, Mr. Caldwell? Well, I was kind of laughing because I was going to make the joke, which I'm going to, that uh, there's a big line, uh, there's going to be a big line today on the water slides at the, uh, down there at Disney, and it's going to be the entire Brooklyn starting lineup. They're all in line to get on the water slide and play, you know, they're all in yeah, the golf course waiting for their tea time. So so if you're looking for those guys, you know, that's you know where they're at, at least. There's going to be a big line with a lot of stars all, all at the water slide. You don't think uh, they're going to so be that, on the, tra- you don't think they're going to be on the trainer's table? The, getting the, you no, know, no ultrasounds I, and and no, ice no. ice baths and all that. I think they patched up when they when they slipped on the <laughs> sidewalk and scraped their knee. They patched that up and now they're they're approved to go in the water. So okay, I think okay. that's what they're doing tomorrow. So that's just my prediction there. Uh, but yeah, this is a uh, this is an interesting game because uh, neither teams have much to play for. They're pretty much locked into I believe it's a seven and eight seed in the East. And, you know, Brooklyn already likes to sit their guys. So as soon as they locked in that seven, they couldn't wait to send the guys over to the water slide, basically. So, yeah, but uh, on the Brooklyn side, I, I do like, uh, you know, Chris Chioza, uh, point guard on De- DraftKings, only 4,400. He's a guy that kind of has been playing pretty good. And, you know, he's probably going to score more because uh, I was saying earlier, someone's got to take shots in this game if you take all their scores out. Uh, so Chioza, if all those guys are out, I think he's a great play at 4,400. And I do like uh, Rodion uh, Kurix. Uh, he's power forward and center eligible at 4,100. And we were talking a little bit before the podcast. I think this could be his breakout game. He is a talented scorer, and he does a little bit of everything. And I think this is the game where he actually might get volume in the shooting game. He hasn't really put up that many shots, but he's been okay for production. And I think that he will have the green light to actually throw up some shots here. And, and he can hit threes. He can drive. He can get assists, you know, defensive stats, rebounds, and a little bit of everything. So I feel like this is his ceiling game here, and I like him at 4,100. Um, and then you got uh, and Timothy Luau Cabaret, Lu- 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 which that's why everyone just calls him TLC because right. it, it's kind of that long name to pronounce there. He's small forward, power forward eligible. 3,600, that's a great price. Again, a guy that can score and do a little bit of everything, but he's definitely a scorer, and he's going to put up a ton of shots. And he's shown when he's done that in the past that he could easily get, you know, somewhere around you're looking for probably around 30 uh, DK points here if he, he scores a lot. So so I think he's a pretty good play. And then on the Orlando side, you're looking at guys like Markel Foltz, uh, point guard and shooting guard eligible at 4,600. And DJ Augustine, pretty decent play as well, 4,500. You can go all the way down to Gary Clark 
uh, power forward center eligible for $3,400. And he can do a little bit of everything, rebound, score, defensive stats. Vucevic is obviously their primary scorer that's still left and their primary guy. He's 8,600, though, and I'm not quite sure it's going to be worth playing that. And I don't really trust Orlando to let him even play the full, you know, to get a full 35 minutes. He might, but I'm not quite sure – they don't really have anything to play for. So why would you, you know, play him max minutes there? So that's why I'm a little nervous about Vucevic. So that's kind of what I have for this game. Uh, and you know, what what's your thoughts on the on these uh, backup players here for this game? Yeah, very similar. I, I think my favorite player for Brooklyn is Luau Cabarro. Uh, you know, he had that strong performance recently with all those guys out. But Garrett Temple was also playing in that game. And Temple is out. So... It is wide open for TLC to get up a ton of shots. So he's my number one net for the day. Uh, and then on the Orlando side, I agree. Those are the guys I would look at. Fultz really stepping it up here. Clark is a potential value play. Vucevic probably a little bit overpriced. You know, Even if he gets 30 minutes and over 20 shots, it's tough to see him getting 50 fantasy points, which is what you really need at, at 8.6 on a slate like this. Uh, there's a couple other studs who I'd rather pay up for. So I probably won't uh, probably won't end up with anybody or on Orlando. You know, maybe a one-off with multiple lineups. But TLC, the core play here for me in game number one. Game number two, I'm a little bit more excited about, Shane, because it's Houston against San Antonio. Two o'clock tip on the east. Uh, Houston's on the front end of a back-to-back. So they are going to sit... Mr. James Harden and Eric Gordon and house is also questionable. So a lot of opportunities opening up for Houston with those guys out. Westbrook is back in. He's going to play the front end here of this back to back, sit out the second one. He's been out a couple games with a quad injury. So he's back. Uh, And then on the San Antonio side, I'll set the stage for the entire game for you. Bryn Forbes is out, and Derek White is questionable. So we may have some extra value in the guard rotation for San Antonio. And San Antonio needs to win this one. You know, they're in the 11 seed. Uh, It's a must win for them. So what are your takeaways from this matchup? Yeah, obviously, I think Westbrook is going to be pretty chalky. He's 9,300 on uh, DraftKings. He's coming back. He's rested a couple games. He's going to be the primary guy. Obviously, the use just goes way up, and he's an explosive player. Uh, the only thing I'm a little nervous with Westbrook is Houston, you know, they're they're kind of playing for seeding. They might be able to move up in the seeding, but I don't know that they really care if they move up to the three seed or stay in the four seed. So I'm just wondering, does Westbrook get his full run? I know he's been resting, but are they going to really push him to that 35, 38 minutes? Or are they just going to, you know, rotate a bunch of these uh, bench guys in there? So that's my only thing. I'm a little nervous about Westbrook, but I know he is one of the better plays here in terms of his production. And then Austin Rivers, of course, had that monster game. You know, he came out of nowhere. You know he's pretty talented, but I don't think anyone was expecting that from him. So he's only 4,100. He's point guard or shoot, shooting guard eligible. And, yeah, with, with uh, you know, potentially house out and hard now, uh, he's going to he's gonna get a lot more usage and, uh, and expect him to have a big game. So uh, it's just a little nervous to play Austin Rivers, being that he's going to be super high-owned and is he in a letdown spot here. But, yeah, he's going to be pretty hard to get off there. And then I'm kind of interested in Ben McLemore. He got up a lot of shots and played pretty good last game. He's small forward or shooting guard eligible, 4,700. And then, of course, you can take a look at Covington. He's basically playing – you know, power forward slash sometimes center at 6,700. And he does a little bit of everything, obviously rebounds, defensive stats, three pointers. And, you know, he should get a decent run here uh, in this game. Uh, Pretty high paced game. Obviously Houston's one of the fastest paced games or teams in the entire league. And San Antonio is actually a little faster paced than they, than they traditionally have been. So it's a fast paced game and it is, it should be a really high over under an exciting game there. Um, and then over on the San Antonio side, I'll be real interested to see what's going to happen with Derek White. I think he might actually play. He last he 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 left last game with like a bruise. I think it was a bruised knee, but I don't think it's serious. So if he plays, I will be interested in him because he's shooting guard or point guard eligible, sixty one hundred. And then Dejounte Murray, if if uh, especially if Derek White's out, you know he's going to be a popular play at sixty two hundred point guard because he's really talented. It's just a matter of Popovich decides to actually give him minutes or not. 
And then, of course, you got DeRozan, who's playing really good right now. He's expensive at $8,000, um, but he is uh, a guy that could still pay, pay off that value and go for 50-plus uh, fantasy points here. So that's kind of what I'm looking at in this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty similar as well. Uh, I agree that the main concern with Westbrook is how many minutes will he get. But the thing is with him, I mean, he is such is such an incredible motor. Even if he only gets 30 minutes, he can pay off value in, in this type of a game. Uh, yeah, Rivers was incredible. 60 fantasy points, 41 points. Um, so he, he will certainly get a fair amount of ownership. But I do like him in this matchup. I think he's going to be very confident after that performance. I think he may even get the start. Even if he doesn't, I think he'll probably push for 30 minutes. So uh, I, I will invest in him. Um, Covington and DeRozan, you know, two excellent players. They're both a little bit expensive for me on this slate. Uh, I'd rather get exposure to this game with some of the cheaper players and Westbrook. Um, you know, because I think he has a much higher ceiling than DeRozan. And, and Covington is is a fine price, but, you know, my build here is is feeling a little bit more like Stars and Scrubs, so he just doesn't quite fit into the mix there. And on the San, the San Antonio side, I agree that the news is all about White. Uh, that'll determine who we might play for San Antonio. Uh, Lonnie Walker is another nice value. At 4.3, another way to get exposure to this little mini game stack. Uh, you know, even more attractive if if White is out, because they'll have to be out there a bunch more. Um, Rudy Gay has also been playing well. If you want to really get a deep game stack, you could include him as well at 5.8. But other than that, I am ready for game three. All right. This is another game that has potential for a stack. It is Phoenix and Philadelphia, 4.30 Eastern tip-off. Phoenix is on a back-to-back. They had a nice win against OKC. Uh, Booker was great for us, and they are 6-0 and in the bubble. They are really rolling, and they got to keep it going here as the 10 seed. They need to keep winning. They need to keep pushing. Uh, they're going to give it their full effort against Philly, who's on the front end of a back-to-back, and they have a bunch of news. Simmons, of course, is out. Uh, Josh Richardson is going to rest. Embiid is out. Harris is questionable with an ankle. Horford questionable with a knee. So we may get their traditional starting five all out. So lots of of minutes opening up here. Uh, Lots of value plays to consider. Um, So... Um, why don't you take a take a run through some of these guys and let us know if anybody sticks out, uh, you know, because in this Stars and Scrubs approach here, we need a couple value plays. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think uh, Philadelphia, yeah, they're a little hard to figure out. I think we have to wait on that Tobias Harris news as well. But uh, for Philadelphia, I do like Alec Burks, uh, talented guy. He's point guard or shooting guard eligible at 4,300. So he's a guy that can definitely hit value. He's definitely not afraid to shoot, and there's going to be plenty of shots and usage to be had here with all those guys out. So I would definitely fire up Alec Burks, Alec Burks with confidence there. Um, I'm not looking at a lot of the other Philadelphia guys yet, but I'm, I'm kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with Tobias Harris. But, you know, it's a little, it's a little iffy there. With uh, Philadelphia, they're they're pretty much locked into their spot. What are they in the sixth seed? And you know, obviously, just trying to get some of their injured guys back. Uh, on the Phoenix side, obviously they they've been red hot, and obviously I think Devin Booker is going to be popular at eighty eight hundred. He, he's uh, I think he's red hot right now, and I like him. Um, you know, Josh Richardson's a good defender. He's not going to be in there. So a lot of the good defenders for Philadelphia aren't going to be playing. So this opens up even more production for this fast paced Phoenix team. So I like Devin Booker. I think he's worth paying up for. And I like DeAndre Ayton because obviously there's no Embiid. There might not even be Horford. So who's going to guard Ayton down there that we're really concerned about there. So Ayton uh, coming off that uh, a game where he didn't play as much, uh, but he, I think he's, he could be due for a monster game. And he's reasonably priced at 7,900. 
for his upside. And then I could also take a look at Ricky Rubio. I think this could be a spot where he could blow up a little bit and have his more ceiling game where he's had, you know, kind of more uh, modest games so far. He hasn't really blown up that much, but he's only 6,600. I feel like this is a game where he could actually get into the mix here with more scoring and of course rack up a ton of assists too. Um, so I'm liking these Phoenix guys, Philadelphia, not quite sure outside of Alec Burke. So I don't know. Do you have some value plays from Philadelphia for me? How, how deep are we going to go here? <laughs> well, Here's the thing. I am I am hoping that Horford does not play. And yep. that's the that's the approach I want to discuss here is if Harrison Horford is out are out and we're looking at basically Shake Milton and everybody else who's been coming off the bench, I think the guy to look out for as a value play is Kylo Quinn. He's minimum price on DraftKings, only three thousand. And as you mentioned, with Ayton, you know, they need somebody to match up with him. He's the best big they have who can actually body up with Aiton and, and keep him honest. And when Kylo Quinn historically has gotten a start, gotten 25 to 30 minutes, you know, he can really pay off value. He can get a double double, a couple blocks. I mean he's he's feisty, uh, you know, and he's talented. He just is buried, you know, so he doesn't get many minutes. So he's the guy I'm looking for as a as my favorite value play there. Burks, I agree, is worth a worth a look. Um, you know, taking the big men out of the equation. So let's say Horford is playing. You know, then then Burks may become my favorite value play. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see what the starting lineup is. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Corkmaz is in there. Three K. We've seen him really pay off value uh, as a minimum price starter. And then Glenn Robinson, the third, three point eight. He certainly has to be considered. Uh, he hasn't played much here coming back into the mix. He's 17 minutes his last game out. So not quite as sharp as Alec Burks, who in the last three games has played 20, 28, and 23 minutes. So uh, certainly follow the news there with us. Um, best way to do that is you can follow us on Twitter at DFS Coach Talk. Uh, you can follow Shane individually at DET Sports Shane. He is the man of Detroit sports. You can follow me on Twitter at Language Olympic. Our fearless leader, Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, has been battling with the internet folks, AT&T, not coming through in the Dallas area tonight. So um, he may not be able to access Twitter here for a bit, but probably by tomorrow, you can find him at J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. And then our man, Freddie Mills, is at Freddie Mills 7, uh, baseball and golf contributor. So that's the, uh, the crew. Um, Shane, let's move to game four as we get in the middle game of the slate here. Middle of the afternoon on the East Coast, 5 o'clock. It's Boston against Memphis. And, you know, this one to me feels like it could be a bit of a dud because Boston's locked into the three seed. Memphis, uh, you know, they need to win to kind of keep a hold of that eighth place spot. But, you know, they're going up against Boston that's really strong defensively. They're fourth in defensive efficiency. Whoever Coach Stevens put, puts out there is going to play hard. And right now the only news we have is that Tice is questionable. Um, so with that as the, uh, as the backdrop... Is there anybody that you're looking at from this matchup? I, you know, I still like the Memphis guys just because they're they're a fast paced team. They have a lot to play for. I mean, it would be pretty embarrassing even with the injuries if Memphis fell out of the playoffs completely. You know, it's already going to be embarrassing if they lose to the nine seed. But I mean, they're in danger of almost losing their eight seed spot there to all these teams are right on their heels. And and if they did that at the last second, so I feel like they're going to go all in. And, and yes, it is not a great matchup, but Boston doesn't have anything to play for. They're locked into the three seed. So I'm not even convinced that they give their starters a full run. So they will be up against some of the backups. And I know Boston has a good bench. But so I, I for that reason, I still like John Morant. If he's the type of guy that can get somewhere around, you know, he's going to he's pretty much like guaranteed like 38 to 40 minutes. So I, I, I like that. Uh, it, I mean, I know he's 8,300. He's expensive. And I know he's not hasn't been that efficient, but I still like him here. Uh, just because he has a lot to play for in Boston, even though they're a great team, 
Um, don't they don't really have much to play for? And then of course, uh, you know, Dylan Brooks has been good. He's fifty four hundred. It's a good mid price guy that has a pretty good ceiling, um, and that certainly will put up a lot of shots and has again he has a lot to play for. So I do like Dylan Brooks. And then Brandon Clark is a guy. Yeah, he's kind of coming off the bench. His minutes are a little iffy, but he was pretty productive in 26 minutes for going over 30 fantasy points last game. And he's only $5,000, so he hasn't been priced up. And he could potentially get more run and get closer to 30 minutes in this game. Um, and there's not really any big guys from Boston that I'm too concerned about on the defensive side. You can attack Boston down low. So I am a little bit higher on these Memphis guys here, and I'm pretty much fading Boston because I'm not convinced they're getting a full run. I feel like they gave their guys a full run those last few games, and Tatum started to look good. They started to mesh, but now it's more like load management time, getting ready for the playoff run. That's just my opinion on Boston there. Yeah, I, I agree with you on the Boston side. I don't think the starters – or get, in, get enough minutes to pay a value, so I'm not going to play any of them. The only guy I'm looking at is if Tice is out, I'll look at Robert Williams III as a, a center, another value play, 3.3. So it'll be a tough choice between him and Kylo Quinn if they're both looking like they're going to get big minutes. On the Memphis side, I see what you're saying. I'm just not quite as high on these guys you know, because of the matchup. Uh, and then comparative price, like Jod, 83. So he could certainly pay off value because they need him to. But Booker at 8,800, I think in general I'd rather pay up for him at the guard spot. Um, Joe Val, you know, nice that you get a little bit of a cheaper price there. And if you want to get a little bit of a unique build, you could you could go that route. All right. Game five, Shane is another explosive potential matchup. It's Portland against Dallas. Portland in that nine seed. Uh, they're pushing like unlike any other team, really, with Lillard at the helm. They need to uh, continue to try to move up the standings here in the last week. And then Dallas, on a back-to-back where they played their reserves against Utah and were able to win it, now they've got all the big boys back. Luca and, and Porzingis will be back in the lineup. And right now they're in the seventh seed. I think they'd like to win to potentially avoid the Clippers in that first round two versus seven matchup. And these two teams are not good defensively. Dallas is all right, but they're 18th. Portland is 27th. And these are two excellent offenses. Portland is fifth in offensive efficiency. Dallas is number one in the NBA. So I'm looking for some points here from two teams that want to get after it. Are you with me on that? Yeah, this one is uh, lit green when we're looking at the color codes here. And our notes, yeah. this one is uh, green lights. L- let's get it going. I mean, uh, I don't know if you had a chance to watch the game. I think that was Saturday night, uh, Dallas and Milwaukee. Luca was an absolute just a tear. I mean, the, the plays he was making, just the physicality and the moves in the paint, the outside shooting. I mean, he really showed up after the Kumpo in terms of who the superstar was in that game. And they, they were getting after him in Milwaukee. He's still one of the best defensive teams in the entire league, and he just completely shredded them. So Luca, you know, coming off a game, he's played a lot of minutes. You know, uh, he was a little bit banged up. They gave him that rest. He's coming off a rest game. If he gets a full go, it's going to be hard to get off Luca here, even at 10,800. Uh, and and I, Obviously, you're not too worried about the defense here, and you like the pace of the game. So, Luca is completely in play here. Porzingis is in play at 8,200 in center. Porzingis has looked really good as well. He's, again, coming off that rest game healthy. Um, and then, obviously, uh, Damian Lillard, uh, I kind of had a feeling he was going to go off the other night for over 50 points, especially after he got into that, you know, Twitter war uh, with those with the guys, you with know, the Clippers. Uh, what was the yep. Clippers guys. Yeah, yep. so I kind of had a feeling he was going to go off before well, even before that game so Lillard is definitely on a mission right now uh and this is another you know great matchup for him in in his type of game that he's going to have to try to match up against Luca and try to try to match that production there so that's going to be a huge game for him and you can still take a look at CJ McCollum at 7600 he's the type of guy that could have a ceiling game as well you know it's a little hard to play them both together but these guys are that good where they you know where the usage is going uh, Nurkic is a little bit priced up at nine thousand dollars. I don't know if it's going to be worth getting to him there. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, fifty six hundred. He's been playing pretty good, and he looks like he's going to get a full run there as well. Obviously, can score a lot, get rebounds, do a little bit of everything there. So, so yeah, I, I think it's definitely worth investing. And I can see a lot of people are going to play Damian Lillard and Luca in this game. 
Um, and then, of course, these other guys are attractive. So what are you thinking? You're definitely looking at stacking this game or a pretty a lot of yeah. exposure here? At, yeah, at least with those two lead guards. I, I will have some lineups with Luca and Lillard for sure. I see them going back and forth, both with the 60, 70, even 80-point upside here in the bubble. You know, they've just been off the charts. So I like them both. Um, Porzingis, you know, he's averaged – over 50 fantasy points on DraftKings over his last five games. So really good value at 8.2. You could look there. I agree. Nurkic is a little bit pricey for me on this slate on DraftKings. One other potential value play on the Portland side is Mario Hazonia. 3.4. This is a guy whose minutes are have not been consistent. You know, he's a generally he's been in the rotation, but some nights he just doesn't get that much of a run that much of an opportunity, but real nice uh, outing last time with 25 minutes, almost 30 fantasy points. Uh, I think this is a good matchup for him. So there's another guy at 3.4 you can add to the mix of potential value plays on this slate. All right, Shane, two games left. Pels and the Kings are next. Both these games are at 9 o'clock, so we'll have two games to wrap out the slate. Uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, and uh, big news on both sides here. Pelicans are resting Drew Holiday, Mr. Ingram, and Mr. Zion. And then the Kings have decided to sit Mr. Fox, Mr. Holmes, and Bazemore is questionable. So with what's left after the carnage here, will you have any exposure to this one? I'm not really loving this game here. Uh, you know, New Orleans, really fast-paced team, and Sacramento, you know, decent pace there as well. Uh, but the problem is you, you have all these stars out, and even the backup players, I feel like they're just going to spread out the minutes for both of these teams. Neither team has anything to play for. So, again, I call it more of an evaluation game, you know, just getting all these different guys some run. So guys that even are normal backups that you think could get 30-plus minutes – I feel like everyone's going to get like 20 to 25 minutes and it's hard to get that much upside out of these, you know, backup players for that. So I don't really like the game in terms of figuring out which guys are going to uh, be able to be productive. And I don't think there's going to be that many players that are going to be able to get enough minutes here. Um, I think that uh, um, we talked about this game earlier and Bogdanovich is interesting. The question is, is even Bogdanovich for Sacramento, who's been on fire, he's been great. Even him, they are, are they going to give him a full, you know, 30 plus minutes? And I'm not quite sure about that. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's it's risky. But with Fox out, you know, I think they may just take a look at it and say, you know, Bogdan, go out and run the show. Just, uh, you know, do your do your thing. He's had three straight games where he's exceeded value with his DraftKings pricing. So he's been playing well with Fox out, you know, I, I think there's just too much of an opportunity here for him at that price that if they do give him 30 plus minutes, I, I think it's likely that he smashes value against the Pelicans team that is playing for nothing. You know, their, their primary guys are out. Uh, so I think it's a great opportunity for him here. You know, these are uh, the 19th and 20th ranked teams defensively who are probably going to be a little bit flat. So, if he gets those minutes, I, I really want him in my lineup. And then you could also look at Buddy Heald. You know, again, with Fox out, it's likely that those two guys are going to be setting each other up uh, the entire time that they're out there. And then one more potential value play on that side is Jabari Parker. He finally got some run in the last game late, uh, chucked up a bunch of shots in the fourth quarter. Uh, so he can pay off value if he gets, you know, even 20 minutes. And then on the Pelican side, it's interesting that it seems like Lonzo Ball is going to play. You know, they may just ask him to go out and facilitate and run around and get, get some of these other guys' shots. And I think a lot of folks will look at J.J. Redick and, and Hart and Melly. But I'm, I'm also going to consider the, the backups to, you know, what might be the starting group tomorrow. Nikhil Alexander-Walker at 3.2 and even Jackson Hayes at 3.4. You know, if those guys get significant run, they can certainly pay off value. Uh, Jackson Hayes, I think is a little bit riskier 
you know, because Melly will be out there for uh, quite a few minutes probably. But Nikhil Alexander Walker, he's a great point per minute guy. Uh, so there, there's a there's a value point guard you could use uh, to mix in with some of these other studs. Okay. All right, Shane, you ready for the for the final game of the slate? Yeah. It's Milwaukee against the Wizards. Two teams that have gone in opposite directions this year. Yeah. Uh, Milwaukee coming off a of back-to-back against Toronto. Uh, and the Wizards not playing for anything. They've been eliminated. So, uh, you know, fascinating matchup here. Uh, in terms of the news, uh, I'm not seeing anything on the Milwaukee side. Um, so what do you think here? Is this just a 24 minutes for everybody and uh, tough to tough to look at any of the starters from Milwaukee? Yeah, it's the same thing. There's, there's nothing to play for. They're locked into that number one seed. And why would you risk, you know, injury to, you know, Antetokounmpo or Middleton or any of those guys, you know, I know they're trying to get Bledsoe back in the mix, you know, and I think he's had a decent run to try to get back into shape and everything. I don't see any reason why they would play their guys. They probably will announce uh, tomorrow at some point. Some of those guys will be out. It's just, you know, they haven't announced it yet. I don't, I don't know. But if they do play, I mean, they can say they're playing and just you know, play them a few minutes. So, yeah, it's hard to trust them. I don't see any reason why they need to play full Obviously, Washington doesn't even really want to play all their starters, whoever their starters are now. And we know who they are. I'm just joking. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, some of those guys we like from Washington when they were, like, trying. But they just, again, I feel like they're in an evaluation period. So, again, it's, it's really hard for me to look at this game. And I'm probably still looking at fading this just because there's so much value in these other games. And there's so much other teams that have good players that have stuff to play for. Um, or just create backups in great spots. So I, it, these last two games for me are, are, are near a full fade. Um, I don't, I don't think, I think it's everything's going to be spread out in terms of the production. Yeah. This one's a lot closer to a full fade for me than the Pelicans and the Kings. Uh, you know, I did notice how the wizards, even in that last game, they, they really kind of split their minutes, even for some of these young guys. So your boy, Jerome Robinson, you know, he could he could get in the mix here at yeah. four point seven. I had a nice game last time out. A little bit pricey there, but uh, you could go there if you, if you wanted to get a little bit different. And on the Milwaukee side, um, you know, if you play out the scenario where everybody just plays twenty four minutes, Dante Divincenzo is a little bit cheap at three point nine. So you know, he could he could pay off value pretty easily in my mind. All right, Shane, um, let's talk about uh, a few different things here before we wrap it up. Uh, membership again, we'd love to have you. Go to dfscoachtalk.com and pick up a weekly, monthly, or annual membership. You can chat with Shane and I in the Discord as, as much as you'd like. We're, we're there before lock uh, to field your questions. Um, and then uh, we mentioned social media. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, if you could please just Give us the thumbs up and subscribe so you get the notification when the podcast posts. We are doing seven days a week NBA podcast in front of the paywall. We also do a PGA podcast once a week on Wednesdays. And then we're going to be crushing some NFL podcasts in the fall uh, multiple times per week. We'll have you ready for every slate there. Um, charity of choice here at DFS Coach Talk is Mamba on 3, M A M. B A O N T H R E E dot org. Uh, Shane, what uh, what are your final words of wisdom here? Did I miss anything? No, Any I final... think definitely definitely join the team because I think we do have a competitive edge with these last few games. We're kind of locked into the team strategies and everything's going on with the rotations and the value players, and we we're really locked into what's going on with these teams, and that's allowed us to be very successful. Um, and this is no exception. This is going to take uh, a lot of uh, a lot more research as we get into the morning hours here uh, and a lot more dedication to trying to figure out these rotations and the value plays. And we're, we're locked into it. So we can do a lot of that hard work for you. And, uh, and you can have the fun of uh, cashing and winning some money. So it's, it's a good <laughs> deal, right? <laughs> uh, it's funny. You know, it is. As you, you talk about as we get into the morning hours 
and yep. we're, you know, we're monitor monitoring the news here. It's 2.42 a.m. in the morning, yep. and it's 24-7 it's, it's right now in the NBA bubble. I mean, yep. uh, the games keep coming. The news keeps coming. Uh, so we're on top of it. You kind of sound like you're on, on CNN there. Uh, yep. He's talking about, you know, checking the news here as we as we transition to the morning hours. But exactly. um, we're going to try to get a few hours of sleep here, a few hours of sleep here. Um, but get this up for you early in the morning. Hopefully you can uh, listen to it along with your breakfast and get ready for the 1 p.m. Eastern tip here on Tuesday for this wonderful seven game slate on DraftKings. As we mentioned, if you want the FanDuel lineups, just come uh, to DFSCoachTalk.com and pick up a membership and we'll get you into our Discord. So without further ado, we'll wrap it up there. On behalf of Sugar Shane Caldwell, uh, Joe Sarvati, and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I am Andrew Hansen, and thank you for joining us. And come back again tomorrow for our next episode of NBA coverage for DFS as we look to crush it in NBA DFS.